Hey, what is up, my magic miscreants? Risen Dragon here with yet another fun deck tech, and this is one that we have not touched for a while, and that is Mono Green. I think you gotta go back. I don't even know if the video's still up, but we did kind of a deck when Eldraine was a thing. I think it was. I think we did it back in January of 21, but. Mono green is something that I haven't done for quite a while. And this is a an archetype. This is a deck that I think really has some fun capabilities to it. Now, a lot of mono green runs stuff like Essica's Chariot or, you know, Werewolf Pack Leader. All of those, you know, are incredibly good cards, but there are other ways around it. And uh, really, this deck just looks to ramp into stuff and eventually just crush opponents with just a, not just a a wide board, but a big board with big creatures. So let's get into it. <clears throat> First thing that we, yeah, we want to establish with Mono Green is that there is not any spot removal at all. It involves fighting, which is what Blizzard Brawl is for. Basically, if you control three or more snow permanents, the creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, and gains indestructible until end of turn. Then the creatures fight each other. Basically, you're targeting a creature of yours and a creature your opponent controls. They fight each other. If you have three or more snow permanents, uh, it gets plus one, plus zero, and it gains indestructible. So, you know, really good kind of spot removal type card. Snakeskin Veil protects us against spot removal. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, and it gains hexproof till end of turn. Okay, then we start getting into our two drops. Emergent Sequence. Basically, we search our library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tapped. That land becomes a 0-0 zero, zero, green and blue fractal creature that's still a land. You put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each land you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. So this is a card that can, you know, give us a creature, and it can give us, you know, some land, some ramp. Uh, Prosperous Innkeeper. Again, just some ramp, a little bit of life gain as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Gives us a treasure. Uh, whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. I think I just repeated myself. I don't care. It's been the end of a long day. Sculptor of Winter. This comes in, plays with the uh, 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 this right here, the snow-covered forests and stuff. You untap a target snowland. It can come in handy. It can ramp into some bigger creatures. Topiary Stomper. One of the cooler... Well, I want to say cooler, but one of the more interesting cards, uh, one of the more interesting rares uh, from New Capenna, and that is, you know, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Can't block or attack unless you control seven or more lands. Just kind of ramps us into stuff. Old Growth Troll, a good one. This one's in a lot of mono mono green builds. When it dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant force you control. And Enchanted Forest has tap, add two greens, and one tap, sacrifice this land, create a tapped 4-4 four, four green troll warrior creature token with trample. So, it also has trample too. Howl Pack Piper is a fun one because it can't be countered. You can put a battle, you can put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield, tap it with one in a green, and then uh, if it's a wolf or a werewolf, untap it. I mean, it's kind of cool because you can kind of cheat out one of these you know, pretty quickly if you play your cards right, pun intended. Spirit of the Alder Guard. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a snow land card, reveal it, put it to your hand. Gets plus one, plus zero for each other snow permanent you control, not just snow-covered forests. We can also look at, say, our Sculptor of Winter, that sort of thing. Titan of Industry, kind of the big finisher. When it enters the battlefield, it's got Trample and Reach. Uh, you choose two, can destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. You can gain five life, put a 4-4 uh, four, four green rhino warrior creature token into play, or put a shield counter on a target creature you control. It's just kind of a big beasty sort of thing, so fun card there. We are running uh, two Bosejus, two Lair of the Hydras <clears throat> sideboards. We are running Tamiyo Safekeeping thought about that, you know, this one kind of comes in handy when you're running, and notice we're not running uh, Essica's Chariot, we're not running Fight Rigging, we're not really running any of those, you know, kind of quote-unquote stereotypical type cards. This is a more interesting look at the build, but Tamiyo Safekeeping could come into play in case we come across, like, say, destruction of, like, a, something other than creature permanence, okay? Uh, broken Wings, uh, Targets are flying. This is our spot removal. Big play is an interesting one in case we're up against a lot of flyers. We do come across a lot of uh, uh, Orzhov Angels in the, in the ladder. So that's a pretty big one right now. Devouring Tendrils. Kind of another 
you know, kind of spot removal type thing. Um, you can easily swap this out with, say, like an emergent sequence or even your, your snake skin veils. Any of these you can. And that's about it. Uh, this deck, I think, you know, it, it can churn out creatures pretty fast. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's competitive. It, it's something I've been taking to casual ranked. We're going to take it to, uh, or not casual ranked. <laughs> but put in casual. We're gonna take it to rank tonight. Can you tell it's been a long day? Uh, but anyways, so we're gonna get into the games. Uh, for those of you that are new to my channel, we play a best of one and then we play a best of three just so you can see how this deck functions in both environments. So without further ado, let's get to the games. We are against Loreth. Loreth is our person. This one we keep because Got a few fun ones here. We can ramp into stuff. Sculptor of Winter is always kind of cool. We do have some spot removal too of Osage. I think the play is Layer of the Hydra into a Snow Covered Forest into Sculptor of Winter, and then we go Topiary Stomper. We're going to hold this up in case they're against like, uh, whatchamacallit, because we're against like a, an enchantment type build. So if Loreth will so kindly tap the button saying that they are ready to go, we will get going. He could just be doing this to intimidate me into just doing a quick concede, but I'm not going to do that. I don't know. It could be a mobile person, too. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, we're going to keep. So let's see what happens. We'll do Lair of the Hydra first. Owl Pack Piper is a fun one to come into, especially with our Titan of Industry here. Sculptor of Winter. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, let's do Sculptor of Winter, just get that down. Probably it's gonna die, but I'm I'm okay with that. So we could just throw down. Eh. I don't. Th I, I want to see what they have with that. Okay, sir. Interesting. Okay. Well, here's what we do. Um. Let's do Topiary Stomper just because I want to try to ramp into stuff. And we've got our seven lands. A very interesting build here. You can tell that they're like, oh, wedding announcement. Okay, well, I don't know what's worse. I think we, <laughs> eh, okay. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're actually going to discard this, destroy this. Yeah, they'll ramp into stuff, but I just don't want that. Um, I just don't want that thing in play. And with very good reason. And that could just get really out of hand. Um, we're going to hold off on this. I want to save the Blizzard Brawl till we get the Titan down. Eh? Okay. Sunrise Cavalier. Interesting. So that can't block. Um, so we're going to take about four points of damage here. If we're lucky. Another circle of confinement, huh? Hmm. Okay. Topiali Stampa goes next. Interesting. Very interesting build. Pass two attackers. Um. Do I... E yeah, I don't want to block any of that. Snake skin veil. Okay. How a pack piper. We're going to do this. I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to do blizzard brawl. To that. Boom. And we're going to hold up the snake skin veil. Uh, just in case they decide they want to pull some shenanigans on us. With, uh... This circle of confinement in a Boros build? Interesting. Okay. I'm okay with that. Interesting. 
Goro Goro. Oh, okay. Fun. Hmm. We decided not to do anything with that. Prosperous Innkeeper is going to come down. That will give us a treasure. Cinderclasm, huh? Well, guess what? We're going to do this. Halpack Piper. Gains Hexproof. Kills those guys. Interesting. And uh, we're going to activate this. Put down... Our Titan of Industry. I'm going to destroy this. Put that in. Um, I do the Topiary Stomper. Because that's going to get fun really fast. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> instant offense. <laughs> We're going to the best of three. And we are against S. Supergrass. We are going to play first. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep it. Reason is, is we can just ramp into stuff, and hopefully we find... I'm gonna do two layer of the Hydras, then an emergent sequence, and then we find a land, and we're, we're, we're hunky-dory. Oh, okay. Antless thing. Dang it. Wrong one. Oops. Well, I think it's gonna die, because this is definitely, like, a play with fire or something like that, so... We could be in a little bit of trouble on that. So much for our ramp. All good. All good. Um, well, okay. Let's see where they go. Interesting. Prismari. Always cool. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to swing in. Nope. Yes, I'm going to use a snakeskin veil on that. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, chess guy. Okay. So, Hinata is probably a thing. Look at all this fight we got in us. Hoo-wee. Of course, we find something like... Well, I mean, we might as well swing in and see if they got something. Um, okay. Well, here we go. Magma Opus. Okay, well, they're ramping into stuff, so Hinata's probably coming down next. Okay, had a feeling. Okay, well. Um, I have a feeling. Boom. It dies. Okay. I got a few more of those too, kid. So... Table of the Mirror Breaker. Huh? How about that? Alright, joink. You die. This guy's getting beaten down with lands. Do we win? I think we win. <laughs> I just got beaten down with lands. Oh my gosh. I am sorry, Supergrass. Oh, MG. Uh, well, I was going to put in, like, say, big play in place of the emergent sequence, but considering that the emergent sequence won us that game, I can't believe that those words came out of my mouth. Emergent sequence won us the game. Interesting. I think we keep. Let's just go to the go to the second game and see what they do. So, uh, you know, this is a deck, uh, the Jeskai deck. I've actually tried this deck before. Uh, just not my cup of tea. I'll have to find a, uh, I'll have to find something that is, uh, uh whatchamacallit, I'm just gonna have to find something there, but, like, find something to, okay, that's not a keep, 
I don't have any early plays. And eh, this one's better. Uh, we're just gonna have to be real careful. Cause if they've got they've got burn, so we're just gonna have to be real careful with what we put down as far as our sculptor of winter is concerned. I'm almost debating whether or not we should uh, simply go into. Okay, that helps. Maybe. Unless they have a reject. Which I don't think they do. It'll die. I'm okay with that. But it's still gonna create a token. Yeah. So then we put down the topiary stomper. Or try at least. Okay. We do. Nice. Demon bolt? Demon bolt! Or Fateful Absence, one of the two. Yeah, Dragon's Fire, okay. Alright. Um, that's okay. Just put that in. Yeah, this is one of those combo decks, I think. Maybe not a combo deck, but yeah, there's, there's your Hinata. Okay. Um, Old Growth Troll, I guess, is an option. There's your gold span. Yeah, this is getting out of hand. Um, and now that's... I don't think that'll die, but... Yeah, big play probably is going to be my next sub-in. Swap it out for the... Uh, yeah. Let's go to the third game. And I think we do swap out the... Maybe we swap out the innkeep? No. Sculptor of Winter. Let's... Ah! Oh. See, here's the thing. These three ramp us into stuff, but Big Play gives us flying. We don't have any flying creatures. So... Yeah, I'm gonna ditch the emergence sequence because Big Play is gonna be... Big. Because we don't have any flying creatures. We do have the Titan of Industry, which has reach, but... That's not really going to come down to late in the game, especially where they're running spot removal. Um, this is going to be... Uh, you know, this, this is a tough matchup for us. However, as you saw in the first game, we beat them with Lance. So, <laughs> it's kind of one of those, all right, well, do what we can. All right, Sculptor of Winter. Let's put this, let's put this, this, this person down and, and see what happens. Play with fire? No. Okay. Cool. Dragon fire? Dragon's fire. Yep. There it is. Okay. Good stuff. Alright. Boom. Prosperous innkeeper. We're just going to... Uh, yeah, we hold up the snakeskin veil, so that's okay. I'm okay with that. And actually, I'm okay with the prosperous innkeeper dying. Um, mainly because, yeah, you're good. I'm okay with that. That can get exiled. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, that helps. Halpack Piper cannot be, cannot be countered. Yeah. And we're going to go Snakeskin Veil, because I know they're going to try to, uh, zap it. So, they are running, all right, they're running a few of that. Hmm. Huh. They were running that. Okay. Seismic wave, huh? Crap. Alright, well. Halpack Piper is about to... down Titan of Industry. We're gonna gain life. And... Uh, Shield counter? Do I want to do shield counter? No, we go Rhino Warrior. Uh, boom. Boom. And Lair of the Hydra. Yeah, we're in business. Maybe. Woo! Woo! And now we go into... Uh, Spirit of the Elder Guard is always fun. That comes into play next, maybe. We'll see. Let's 
expressive iteration. All right. Well, let's go to the postmortem. But after you see me rank up to silver, one. Yes. All right, let's go to the postmortem. So as you see, this deck has some fun tricks to it. And quite honestly, it goes, it can go wide, it can go big, it can go big and wide at the same time. And I think that there's a lot of flexibility to it. It is definitely a Risen Dragon type deck. It's got flexibility, it's got aggression, there's some elements of, dare I say control, but there's some quirky elements to it. And I think that this deck definitely has some potential in the waning months of this current standard to really do some damage. So we are still in the lower ranks. Once we get up into like say gold or, or even maybe platinum, I'm going to shoot for platinum again this season. Uh, hopefully knock on wood. Uh, a lot of our, uh, I'm not even going to say it, but <laughs> not even going to say it. Um, but anyways, I, I'm hoping to devote more time to it. So uh, if you like the video, leave a like, leave a subscribe. And until next time, my friends, my magic miscreants, may all your draws be godlike. May all your spells hit the board. Risen Dragon is out. Enjoy the rest of your day.